So straight ahead. This, yeah, this is this is Bill Moss Parkway. So Bill, you're one of my favorite Elvis people, and I've always wanted to ride on Bill Morris Parkway with Bill Morris. Well, now you are. You're making my dream come true, Miss well, Morris. You've asked for it, and we're going to deliver it once again this Elvis Birthday Week 2023. Join myself, Glow Trotting with Trey and the Spa Guy in Memphis, Tennessee, for a three hour tour of Memphis Elvis locations. See Memphis, Tennessee, the way Elvis Presley saw it once upon a time. Join us on the Elvis History Part 1 and Part 2 tours. From January the 5th until January the 9th, go to www.memphisbustour.com and get your tickets from the link on whatever dates that are available and works for you. Get your tickets while they last. We only have 13 seats available for each bus tour and they fill up quickly. So get those tickets right now before someone else gets your seat. And join us. We have a part one and a part two tour, both for three hours or longer. And you will see Memphis, Tennessee the way Elvis saw it once upon a time. And we go to the locations just like our YouTube shows. And you'll stand there and learn the history from the very exact place that that history happened. It doesn't get any better than that. So guys, like I said, go ahead and go to www.memphisbustour.com and decide which dates work best for you. And don't take my word for it. See what the fans have to say. It was awesome. Something that I didn't even expect. At you all. learned a lot. No. You learned a lot yeah. compared to the movie. You we know it's not fiction. We got the real thing. And uh, I thought it was great. You live and learn more every day, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and that's what we do. You never know, man. Oh. Uh, we're researching. And you guys are really well knowledge. I mean, we try our best. You guys work together unbelievably great. A lot of information. The house on Audubon was, was awesome. That was a highlight for me. My highlight was Red West. And comparing the old photos to where you are. Unbelievable stuff. You it's guys did the best. It's fantastic. That, uh, we, we were used to taking the, uh, the other tour, and this is the first time we've taken the second tour. So much more content, uh, which is the great thing about the first tour, because you, go, you guys really get into the weeds. Yeah. And it's not just Elvis. It's uh, Elvis in Memphis. It's Memphis. It's other history. Uh, it's so worth it. Uh, it it's worth it at, at, a, at a much higher price point. This was an excellent tour. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And the fact that we got extra time and I felt like we could have just kept going. It was just fantastic. If you guys do do come up with a part three, we're definitely going to be here for it. All right. Hey, we're, we're definitely coming up with a part three. We have so much more <laughs> locations to show. Well, we'll we will be, be there. there. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm from Coventry from the UK. I'm Patsy. I'm also from Coventry, the UK. And you come on here and run in here too. Uh, okay. My name is Sydney. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm a lifelong Elvis fan and just so appreciative of this great tour. I've seen a lot of things I would never have seen otherwise. Thanks to both you, Trey, and, and to Billy for showing us all around Elvis spots in Memphis. All right, so you learned just a little bit more today. Huh? Right, a just lot Just a little more. bit more I'll, about this real man. That, that I'll, I'll say Elvis. a little bit more. I'd say a lot. I learned a lot more. <laughs> I found this tour to be the, the talking Wikipedia of Elvis what goes on you know outside the, the grounds of Graceland I totally recommend this yeah it's great to see that Elvis was a man and you know he had a whole playground to himself and he did what he wanted when he wanted to do it so to see those sites today just actually brought home that you know he, he did have some private time away from performing and we saw a lot of that today of where he spent his time and a lot of fun yeah he was having a fun time he was like we were happy. having yeah, a great time along with it he was having a really it. fun time he was a young man he didn't want to yeah. stay in right, right. <laughs> i appreciate you man what you guys do the, the history the research you guys put into it and the enthusiasm of both you gentlemen put forth to tell the story so you guys, guys are super down to earth too so and easy to talk to and easy to approach and i, I love that so for anybody that's never seen spa guy or trey's videos better get on board because you're missing a lot of Elvis 
Yep. This is the best. That's a fact. <laughs> do you like it, Holly? I do. I love it. Yeah, you've That's done so seven or eight hours with us I today. Hey, on the left, everybody, Red West is buried here. Edna, Dr. Nick, uh, Sam Phillips. So the fans have spoken. They enjoy riding around Memphis with a spa guy and glow trotting with Trey. So be sure to get your ticket today. And I can't wait to see you for Elvis's birthday week, January 2023, from January the 5th until the 9th. See you then. Go get your tickets. Hey, and thanks for watching. Bill, you had mentioned to me that you had a really big relationship with, in Japan. Right, exactly. And, uh, and it, that was an incredible thing, too. Uh, it's so easy to get fouled up on sign language and what have you. Uh, and every, uh, you have to be careful not to use your hands too much because it might mean something <laughs> uh, derogatory. Yeah. And so you learn to keep your hands in your pocket. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, thinking about that. How many of those uh, friends over there wanted to talk about Elvis? It, it's amazing. Uh, I found um, music was a, a, a large connectivity, and Elvis Presley was one of them. As a matter of fact, I went into uh, uh, Japan and to a uh, TV manufacturing facility back many, many, many years ago, and uh, uh, was touring facility where they were going to build a facility in Memphis and in the process I took a small calendar card a 1968 calendar card uh, with Elvis on the front just a, a year glimpse of the calendar and I had a stack of those cards and uh, I started down the assembly line and I laid one down in front of an employee and then I on down and put out a few uh, what I want to tell you is that they got so excited about those cards, it closed the assembly line while I was there, and they were getting those cards. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough for everybody, but those who got them were so excited about getting an Elvis Presley. Little thing is a small card with his picture on it, but it was a calendar. And so you realize right then, everywhere I went in all the country selling Memphis, there was always, there was always a presence of Elvis supporters. And generally speaking, many times, like in London and some of the other places in Australia, I was on television and I was always interviewed about lots of things, but most all of them would ultimately include Elvis Presley and his music and Nashville. And uh, in Japan, there was a great deal of interest in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, because that's where the bomb was made that uh, was used to bomb uh, Japan. Oak Ridge. At okay. Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge, Tennessee, that's where the bomb was created. And that. so, and then uh, once we were in Japan, the governor and I, Governor Lamar Alexander, we were there for the Southeast USA Japanese Association meeting, which we were very active in, and we were on stage, and Governor Alexander played the piano, and we sang Rocky Top to the audience, and they loved it. <laughs> and uh, uh, so the music was a big thing. Another big thing in Japan was Jack Daniel whiskey. Jack Daniel whiskey, okay. Jack Daniel. And uh, when I called on a major corporate leader, I would carry a little walnut cask of Jack Daniel with some little silver plated cups in it uh, as a gift, a memento from Tennessee uh, Jack Daniel Distillery. And that was always a, a smart thing to do. And once I did that uh, to uh, the president of Nissan Motors, and he would, with a big smile on his face, pulled up his hand and hit the button. And and, it, and the music that came out was the Tennessee Waltz. So you can tell how sensitive they were about our culture, you know. So I thought that was kind of neat. That, uh, we're about to, uh, here we are in a major, major thoroughfare of right in the center here. Bill Marsh Parkway is right ahead of us. And uh, this is a building on the right, and that building is where Bill Marsh Parkway was introduced before it was completed.
Okay, so that's the building where the pictures. Yeah, right. Well, the pictures you made was made right in the corner up there, so that we could see the road having been built. Ah, and, uh, okay, that's great. It was being opened uh, at that point, and that's the first time I'd had a chance to see it from the air, uh, all of it. But we're we're about uh, three miles from where it connects to uh, the. Expressway around the city of Memphis, and this this road non kind of goes all the way out to the edge, where it connects to I-69, which goes all the way from uh, Canada to Mexico when it's finished. It's a very important part of our commerce, and this road services uh, everybody who works at and deals with Federal Express. Uh, as we're going out, we're going to see uh, how it's helped develop. The little community of Collierville has become a major, major development area of warehousing and so forth, not only for Collierville, but going into another major highway into Mississippi, North Mississippi. And so working with Mississippi uh, has been a bigger factor uh, of success because uh, they coordinated with us on certain highways. Uh, highway 72, for example, going into Corinth, Mississippi, into the uh, the, the uh, uh, Tennessee River. Right. So that's a, that was a big deal, and of course, also it connects to Highway 64. It goes all the way to Mount Eagle, Tennessee, uh, bypassing Nashville, but connects so you can get a, a quicker trip to Chattanooga and Knoxville. So this is then I would say one of the most important loops outside of I-40 that we could have built, and uh, so. It was designed and built so that it could become a permanent part of a thoroughfare, so it could connect Mississippi and Tennessee and to all parts east for the most part. So straight ahead. Is, this, yeah, this is this is Bill Marsh Parkway. So Bill, you're one of my favorite Elvis people, and I've always wanted to ride on Bill Morris Parkway with Bill Morris. Well, now you are. You're making my dream come true, Mr. Well, Morris. Well, I have to tell you, though, uh, you have to do this with some caveat in that we have to be very careful because people drive really, really fast on the Bill Morris Park. So y'all remember you this. See, yeah, all this. This is uh, it's a great highway. But no matter what your speed limit is, somebody's going to pass you. Hey, but it's your highway. That's <laughs> right. Hey. Well, it's, uh, and with that, I... I make doggone certain that I don't violate the law. Oh, you you don't want to break the law on your own <laughs> no, highway? You, you're not no, going to do and, like Elvis would do? And, and no, and, right. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I don't want one of my former deputies arresting me uh, as a sheriff uh, along the way. And the sheriff's department, you see them everywhere out here. Yeah. Interesting enough, most of these deputies were not born when, you, when I left the sheriff's office. They, maybe their fathers were. They had fathers, and this is two generations away. That was 1964 to 1970, three terms, which was a constitutional limitation. But then I became mayor eight years later, and then, and then served 16 years. Now it's been 27 years or so since I I, I retired from the mayor's office. Right. So I'm just hanging around, uh, and I enjoy seeing the fruits of what we did and the payoff. Yes, sir. And a lot of times. A lot of people can't see that, and uh, I'm grateful for the community recognizing the things that we did and have added to uh, our effort to make uh, our infrastructure more. Uh, as Fred Smith said, I ride on your highway every day, yeah. and uh, he's one of our, uh, is, he is our largest employer. So, now, we come up, uh, right ahead of us is Hacks Crossroad, and Hacks Crossroad, when we get around to that highway, it goes across from the eastern portion of our city all the way into Mississippi. Right. Uh, and uh, opens up that road extremely well. A feeder off of this highway. So. So they dedicated this to you in what year, Bill? Uh, 1998. 1998. Yes, and you know, I was always grateful that uh, they named the highway, and I was honored by all of that. But so many of my friends, political friends and allies, had 
everything in the world to do with what we have done here with highways. It wasn't me, it was a team of not only the state, but local, uh, and try to make these kind of things happen. And I received the benefit of, of being named uh, on for the highway, but it was a, you could put a lot of names here. As a matter of fact, as you get all the way around to the edge of the county, you'll find two other sections named in honor of the former governor, Winfield Dunn, who I had the pleasure of working with many, many years uh, in my early days as the uh, as the sheriff. And uh, he was a good friend in Memphis. He was from Memphis. And so, it's all of the people who are named on this highway are Memphis people. Memphis. Even though some are governor and what have you. But it's businessmen, businessmen, political people, entrepreneurs, all. But it's, 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 it makes sense. Yes, sir. That they, their names are here. Uh, I'm happy, I'm just, just delighted uh, and humbled by the fact that I'm one of the three that, that covered the entire area surrounding the entire city of Memphis and Shelby County. And yeah, but you were talking about the highway, you know, the, the highway structures and everything since you've been out of office in 27 years. Yeah, not much has happened since then. There has not been much. No. And, and, you know, improvement or any, you know, no. not improvement, but uh, I guess new. Well, I, I'm not certain what happened along the way, uh, but the type of leadership that we had had different ideas about what the needs were or whatever, but leadership that replaced me did not go out into the rest of the world and promote Memphis as such, either in the city or the county. But right here in, in this area where we are now, a lot of development has taken place and, and in what was, would have been basically abandoned uh, area. But uh, now we have, even in this area, because of quality of life, we have large numbers of this elderly living housing, uh, senior, senior housing, shopping, shopping centers, and so forth. And all, it all comes kind of together, as they used to say, a megalopolis, uh, which connects everything to everything. You don't have a lot of, if you notice over here on the left, all these many, many apartments, and also on the right, uh, because there's a major thoroughfare going from Tennessee over into Mississippi. And so it's incredible how many rooftops you'll find on the left and right that all of this was vacant 20 years ago. All of this was just vacant land. Mm -hmm. Woods. Wow. I want, so, okay, so Bill, I wonder uh, if Elvis was still with us, how fast would he be driving on Bill Morris Parkway? Well, you know, uh, I, I think that uh, he would be law-abiding. Law when he was driving cars fast, generally it was, it was uh, less restriction on fast speeding. For example, from Palm Springs to Los Angeles, uh, those highways were more lenient on speeding cars. And so he, when, he, when he drove that Blackhawk with his 100 miles an hour, he might have had people that passed him on the highway. You know? yeah. So there was more people that were speeding. If he were here, uh, and, and he knew what the law was. I don't think that he would uh, thumb his nose at the law. I think he'd be respectful of the law, which I found to be the case on all other things that, uh, of his life. Uh, the times I was around him, it was uh, his conversation with me was having to deal with helping the law enforcement not be a hindrance. That's what his conversations was. He wanted to help you guys. Right. So he, he liked hanging up, hanging around with y'all. Yes, he did. He rode around in cars. And yeah, and now you know, I I was with him in Palm Springs, and uh, we he looked to ride around with, with the uh, policeman in Palm Springs, and uh, so he had a good association, whether it was Denver or Palm Springs or uh, Los Angeles. He had a, uh, a connection with law enforcement in a way that uh, showed his respect. So I always appreciated that. Yeah, you just saw a picture you had never seen the other day of you and Elvis and Tupelo. Yeah, right. I had not seen that. I was there. He wanted to, uh, the guy who was a sheriff down there at that time, he and I were classmates in Fulton. 
Itawama Junior College in high school. And after I left there in Itawama County, he got into politics in Tupelo. And so Sheriff Mitchell, so I, I called him and made arrangements to get Elvis down to get a badge. Elvis loved it. And, uh, he loved getting those badges. Oh yeah, he loved going back to Tupelo. Yeah, because I think you told me that uh, he actually went and visited your grandma. I, he did, and and I, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, my grandma was quite ill, but she remembered Elvis as a boy and his, his mom and dad because she lived very close uh, in, the, in the neighborhood. And uh, that evening, after I came back to Memphis with Elvis, my, my grandmother had uh, asked my mother and sister where she lived. Said uh, I enjoyed seeing Elvis again, but who was that man with him? <laughs> so <laughs> it was that was a kind of a, a funny deal. She she remembered Elvis, but she didn't remember you. That's the right. Side, that, huh? That's right. That's wow. And you, I think you said your grandmother passed away soon after that. Yeah, a couple of weeks. I was point out all this construction that's going on here. Now this is an access to the community of Bahia, Mississippi. And then you go on up a little bit further, and you go all the way into North Mississippi. Uh, where they have an automobile parts factory and a lot of warehouses. So this becomes a, a warehouse in Mecca, uh, out in this area. I pointed out earlier that you can get on, you can get on Bill Marsh Parkway and go all the way to California without any hindrances, yeah, I unless, didn't, I know it's, that. unless it's construction. And so you can ride Bill Morse Parkway from Memphis all the way to California. Right, and of course for truckers. Uh, that's a big factor to be able to not have impediments all along the way. And of course, like everything else, you have you have wrecks and you have construction. You have always have those deals to work with, but they keep up, truckers and shippers people, they keep up with what all's going on so they, uh, they manage. So this is Highway 385. Bill Park Parkway is 385. It has four segments. And uh, this is, uh, it's, the town that connects all of this to Mississippi is Cottyville. And then this highway here goes down over there, it goes all the way down to Carr, Mississippi, and has a lot of warehouses. But and so it's kind of a, a neat connection. And that's why this needed to be built so that you get around the city. Now we're going past the little town of Cottyville going out to the area that uh, we'll go past it we'll go past the highway areas and exits to turn around on up a little place on up the road because uh, you will see several exits along here. That goes into the town of Collierville. Collierville. Which, by the way, since this road was built, this has just multiplied population many times over. And it's an area that's developed two things. One is significant high quality housing and, uh, and business opportunity. So, yeah, it, it brings businesses now, this to is, the areas. Now, now, I want to point out this is I 69. Okay? Okay. I-69 is the highway from all the way from Mexico to Canada. Here's the way this is it right here. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's been, as we speak, it's been built. You know, you see new businesses being built here and whatever. And now you're coming off I-69 here and uh, to get on Belmore's Parkway. So this is, it connects both of us. Right. We'll go to the next intersection and turn around, but we'll basically be towards the end of Bill Moore's Parkway. I think just like 14 miles. So, Bill Moore, your, your parkway, Bill Moore's Parkway, runs 14 miles. I think 14 miles is the best spot. Now, we are out of my county and to Fayette County, now, which is, you see the highway right there, I 69. Bill Marsh Parkway there, but this this is uh, part of the Bill Marsh Parkway, yep. and it ends right up here. As far as my name is concerned, and, and ultimately, it changes to 
they've been calling the plane fleet done for sure. So, Bill, when they, uh, I guess, uh, did you have an idea that day what they were doing, or did they surprise you with it? Well, you know, I had heard something. I had no idea that it was going to be done the way they did it, but it was it, it was really a nice gesture. And uh, uh, We're going to make the turn here and get back on and drive back. But if you look over everything to your, to your right, now all this is developing into a major industrial area. And, uh, and for those people who have companies here and uh, have admitted access to everything north, east, and south, you know, so forth, it's, it's pretty incredible. That was fun right there, Bill. That's something I've always wanted to do. Well, we, we did it. I'm going to take us back up the way a little ways here. But we, uh, see the, I two, see the 269 number over there? Yeah. This becomes 269. And it connects to uh, Bill Marsh Parkway as well. So I'm going to take us around this thing. I think I think we can loop this make a loop. right here. If they have all finished now, I could drive to Monterey, Mexico. From right here? Yeah, starting here. And just drive, drive, drive. To try out again. That's exciting to see. Uh, I will tell you that when you build a new highway, and you use, if you use any federal funds, then the, uh, there's a litmus test, that you have to, an economic test. You have to have a, an, an ambition to repay the cost of building the highway by the development and tax structure. And I'm told that the returns on the Bill Walsh Parkway has been incredibly significant and that it is well more than paid for itself. And that's an important question. When people, taxpayers, uh, you tell them you want to build a highway. Well, the federal government will tell you it, you got you have to justify it, and what with the with the plan where you think it's going to return enough proceeds that you're going to pay for all this at the maintenance and the construction over the long haul. And uh, if you were to ask the federal government today about the area for Bill Marsh Parkway is, they would tell you that that was a great investment because the return has been far more than I ever anticipated. And so that, that's another part of why I'm so pleased. A lot of people do not understand uh, how that works, but a lot of areas that get highways uh, have a tough time doing that. But this area, because it, it's an urban area, and it's up to a, connecting a suburban area, that the development's significant enough to produce the revenue to justify it. Right. Wow. And I think you federal trust is one of the good uh, witnesses to that benefit because they have, you know, in this city they've got 30 or 40,000 employees worldwide, they've got 300 plus thousand, and, uh, and growing and growing and growing along with all a lot of others, UPS and what have you, but the, the movement of goods and services by Federal Express and others makes us the number one cargo airport in the world. And that's what you tell me. Yeah. So, and I like to tell that story to whomever will listen because the medical uh, services in our community depends on the great airport and the availability to get the, their equipment in and out, move body parts or what have you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so Memphis is a medical center, medical is a transportation center, uh, a distribution center, there's a high quality of life area. Uh, it's, it's people who hard working people in this area. So we have a lot to be proud of right here in the center between Arkansas and Mississippi and North, North Tennessee. And just recently, we opened one of the largest uh, car manufacturing plants being built within right near this, where this connects 
just outside of Memphis uh, that's been built in this country by Ford Motor Company. And so well, there again, you. it's called payoff, payoff by planning and, and investing money and time and effort. And it don't happen overnight. It took 30 years to get that industrial park built and this kind of a company into this area. Well, I can tell you one thing, Mr. Morris, is uh, if uh, Memphis would be lucky to still have you in office. <laughs> well, uh, no, it's not just me. It's people, you know. people who have, have more on their mind than their political success of winning an election. It's whether they're making a contribution. Are you leaving your community better than you found it when you came, the day you were elected. Uh, is the next generation going to have better opportunity than they had when you came into office? Those are the kind of things you need to ask yourself if you're seeking political office. I think a lot of us are very tired of the rhetoric without the benefit of production. And uh, we get a sense of, large sense of that right now, but looking at the federal government, and I say that, uh, with some degree of embarrassment uh, for our, our country because I, I feel like we've got more conversation and now we have people who are caring for solving the problems of the people of this nation. I agree with you, Mr. Morris. I, it's, it, it's a crazy place. Yes. Right? It's, yeah, and it, I guess that may be a part of uh, the, the downside of becoming uh, international. You know, we, we uh, we don't get enough of the accountability because of the heavy lobbying opportunities of international communities. Uh, kind of puts a restriction on us as far as planning for just for our country. I, uh, I agree. This is where I agree with Trump totally. I think we need to put America first if we're going to maintain any solid economic base. Uh, because pretty soon the rest of the world can help you drain your resources uh, if you're not very careful. I think there ought to be some limitation of how much we can contribute to the rest of the world. Except for the world democracy, uh, free and open society, which we all would like. But then a lot of times things get bogged down and gas and oil and and uh, greedy, self, greedy, self-serving decisions by communities around the world. So it's a tricky situation. It is a tricky situation. But uh, and, and with all of our sores and illnesses in this country, political and otherwise, I still think I have to have a travel over around or most of the rest of the world, one time or the other. I'm always happy and anxious to get back home. That's not it's Bill Moore's part of the way. Yep. Bill Moore's there's, no place, there's no place home in America. There's no place other than America. That's I, I mean, I love it. I love to get back. When I'm gone, I sort of, I sort of forget about <laughs> all the negative things that I think about when I'm back home reading the newspapers and watching the news. So I don't watch all of that when I'm gone. And, I, then I have a tendency to, to think more about the positive things, about how I've grown up and how great it's been for me and given opportunities I would never find anywhere else except in this country, perhaps. So, viva, viva America. Yeah, I like it, viva America. And like you said, you're, I mean, you're from Tupelo as well, right? I'm, I'm from Lee, Lee and Itawama County and that area. You're, you're from that, okay, so Lee yeah. County, that's right. It's that area of Tupelo. Yes, right. That's great. You and Elvis, so y'all had that connection. Yes, we did, and we talked about that a lot in our in our early years. I went to his graduation, high school graduation, and that's where I left that graduation back in 1953. And the little girl that graduated with Elvis, we went home and celebrated the graduation and decided, well, I want to get married. And so, three days later, we were married. Hey, you put a ring on her finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're, uh, yeah, you, and, your, and, your and, wife graduated with Elvis. Yes, she did, in 1953. And she was a little Arkansas gal. And I tell you what, we had a wonderful life of challenges and successes. And she lived, she 
passed away six years ago, just five years ago, with a stroke, because of a stroke. But we had 66 years together. 66 years ago. Yeah. Can't, can't ask for, for much more than that. No, right? you really can't. You know, I tell you, she had a stroke, and I was, I was able to be her caregiver for 19 of those years. And I was out of politics, and just sitting on, sitting on the sideline, but all the things I did as sheriff and mayor and all the other things, traveled around the world, nothing had the same level of satisfaction in terms of being able to cope with, the caring for, the mother of my four children. And uh, so I, I cooked for her, I bathed her, cared for her, and it was, it was never without any uh, put upon me, uh, things that I felt like somebody else should be doing. I accepted it as my my opportunity to validate my own life by helping her with hers. Wow. So so I'm a satisfied soul. And you got to you know spend those those moments with, yeah. with your wife. Hey, moments, days and nights, uh, day and night. Yes, sir. All those years. And you tell me of the interesting thing that the last time that you guys saw Elvis at the Mythian, is yes, your wife. What did your wife do? Oh, well, we, we hugged and talked because she, she loved Elvis and he loved her. And uh, we had become such, such close friends over the years uh, uh, of his success years. And spent a lot of time with him at the house and what have you. And I was traveling with him a lot on some of his tour stuff. But uh, she scolded him like a child about taking care of himself health wise. And uh, we sat there, and it's obvious that he had a real health issue at that point had no idea how bad at that point but uh, so we hugged and embraced it was, it was sort of dark in there the movies had started and uh, with other people that see in the movie and, uh, and we just got to quietly hug each other and, and uh, there were tears and I might add that uh, it was a, a somber moment and I reflected on that later on and I'll always be grateful we had that moment to embrace and, uh, and, and at least have those private moments. Yes, sir. And you think that would have been 77? That was 77. Wow. He died just a few weeks after that. At that so that was the Mythia Theater? Yes. You, had, you can't probably remember the movie, can you? No, I, you know, there never was any interest in what was on the movie. In fact, we were Elvis and everybody's conversation. It was late at night, and what are we going to do next? Yeah. And what, are we going out to the house to eat or, or have breakfast or what, you know? You were there with, at a movie with Elvis, so what else what did you want? You yeah, know? you can't ask for more of it. So what, what was what was a night out on a movie with Elvis? You, you, you did go back and eat sometimes? A lot of times, yes. Uh -huh. They sure would have did. food ready for y'all, or you just go there and say, I don't something. remember that. If, but if he ordered it, it was going to be ready. Sometimes, uh, you know, I, I mentioned to you about going, we were, Priscilla and Ann and some of us, we ended up out at the uh, Red Iron Restaurant uh, on, near Graceland. And it was open all night at that point. And uh, so we uh, ran into those guys, that, late night guys, you know, uh, from the area, I guess, that they were, they were a little loud, a little profane, and we had to ask him to, to cut it out. And so by doing so, I asked him, I was the sheriff at that time, I asked him to go outside and uh, so I could discuss it with him. If not for means of confrontation, but if there had been, Elvis had walked right up behind me. He was ready to do whatever to help the sheriff handle the situation. <laughs> uh, so he was great. Yeah. He was great. So you, you, had to, you had to calm Elvis down. You had to... No, you know, he, uh, I had to assure him. Assure him it's that okay. Every, yeah, everything's okay. Because you said he was right there watching the situation. Yeah. I'm going to take you three and a half miles on up here. Bill Marsh Park, where you go, if you see the sign, runs at I-240, which serves the city. And I just want to see and show you how this all connects. Okay. And we'll go up there and take it. Get off and go back to where I live. Yeah, I really have been lucky. For 52 years, I've lived in the, the area close by. Uh, so I've been shopping in this area where I am now and all over. But this, this road has really been uh, incredible value to, to shoppers and movement. In Mississippi, uh, 
you will not believe how, how this helped get Mississippians and the Memphis to work and shop and, and they and I would have to say they shop as about as much as they work and it helps everybody. And so it's great. He's pumping the money into the into the um, into Memphis, into the county. It's the county you shop in. County, Shelby, Shelby County, Memphis. Shelby County. I mean, yeah. you know, in Bill Morris Parkway, a lot of Elvis fans. Runs from Memphis all out at the they, county. A lot of Elvis fans coming into the town and will be riding on Bill Morris Parkway. It goes over right into the county. Uh -huh. It circles the city and the county. I know one of my favorite things you did there during uh, Elvis Week, which I captured and put it on the YouTube show, was you told the fans about how you would always introduce Memphis at events when you were the mayor. Right. I, you know, what I did, uh, I traveled so many different countries, and, uh, you know, people would bring up the question sometimes, where is Memphis, what is Memphis, so what? And I, the first thing I would do, I connected Elvis to where I'm from. I, I would just simply say, my name is Bill Morris, I'm the mayor of Memphis, Tennessee, home of Elvis Presley, the greatest entertainer that ever lived. And he so, said, people would go and crazy. Love it. They, they love, love it. it. People love it. When you did that this uh, uh, this past summer, and uh, I have it on film, it was, that was cool. That was I, that was a cool moment, man. Well, you know, I think people understand. I really believe that, and I really loved Elvis, and I was not one of the groupies or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But I was the mayor, not the sheriff, and a friend. Yeah, and, and you're in that famous Memphis Mafia picture. That's exactly right. Was that? I, I was one of the privileged ones to be with Elvis take some travel with him and so forth yeah. and uh, so now we got the exit to, to 240 connected this for Bill Moss Park we would now be uh, the 240 okay. right up there and we'll eventually get on 240 and that's the end of Bill Moss Parkway as we know it so that's the end of Bill yeah. Moss Parkway and, and right now as it connects to the 240 circling threshold highway around Memphis. Man, that, that Memphis Mafia picture, Bill, I've never asked you about it. I, I know that was at Sonny West's funeral. I mean funeral, uh, wedding. Wedding. And you guys, I think Elvis decided to lead their reception and have the reception at Graceland. Yes, I think that's probably right. And y'all, I guess uh, it, it seems in that picture, I know it's been so long ago, but it seems in that picture that you guys were maybe standing in the living room? You know, I think so, but uh, that was a stage deal that Elvis wanted to do. Uh, you know, he had on the black and white outfit, he had it's sort of like a, a mobster, you know. Uh, you would think of, and you see pictures of gangsters and, and movies in the past, and they'd have a black vest and a black jacket and a white tie and diamond stick pen and sunglasses and so forth. But he, he loved looking that way, you know. So. He, that was Elvis, that was Elvis and, Presley. And he, he was forever the actor, forever. But he, he loved, he loved the, his people around him. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't want to be anybody to be offended, but he didn't want anybody to be so sticky that he, if he said something that might be off color a little bit, they should accept it for what it was. Yeah. And, uh, and vice versa, you know. But that's great, though. And, like, we have no idea how Elvis truly was. I mean, he was a great guy. He was just a fun guy. And well, I've never, I've never had the capacity to explain my feelings adequately about Elvis. Uh, uh, he, he was nice to me. He, gave me gifts and so forth, but I was also a public servant. I, I, I was a salesman who called on Graceland as a printing salesman uh, before I got to do, spend any time with Elvis. Uh, like the, the printing needs and Christmas cards. As a matter of fact, my company printed the first Christmas card that he wanted designed and, and, and printed for the first year he was at Graceland. 1957? Yeah. So your company printed that? Yes. Sure did. Do you see it? Don't have one, do you? Yes, I do. We might have to throw that on the video. I, I, I'd have to go find that. Okay. Yeah. 
It's not quickly accessible. I'll find one, hopefully, on, uh, on the computer, me. And I'll... Yeah, I, I know uh, uh, John Daly had one of those. Uh, there are not many around. Uh, very few. Uh, I guess less than a half dozen anywhere. That's great. That's great, man. Well, Mr. Morris, if Elvis is anywhere as cool, any way as close as cool as you are to me, <laughs> and Elvis was a cool guy. Oh, he was. No, I, I'm not cool. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you're by, cool. By comparison. I, I think everybody watching would say you're cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was, he was a one of a kind, and he'll be around a long after. Uh, most people who were in his business will be forgotten. Still going strong, man. Yes, All these yeah. years, like, can you can you believe that you know somebody like myself and the spa guy, we do these videos yes. on the guy. Oh yeah. Thank yeah. goodness for the technology that you have available. The guys are doing this, mm -hmm. and the commitment to do it, so that you know history will be a lot more clear. Yeah. But what you're doing, interviewing people that knew him and what have you, and uh, of course sometimes it's, it's it's very hard to get clarity from. A lot of the people you talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir, and that's why we try to do the best research that we uh, can. You know, you can't be sure about everything being factual that you hear. Mm -hmm. I always thought about that, and I listened to some of the people talking, telling stories. I said, I was here, and I don't remember all of that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. The things that some of you guys have had to put up with for the past 40 years. Yeah. With the stories that have been told that fans now believe is, yeah, I can't fathom that. Uh, yeah, I mean, fantasy becomes reality after a while. Yeah, fantasy becomes reality. That's right. Well, Mr. Morris, I appreciate you making this dream come true for me. Well, I thank you. I tell you, I'm really sincere when I say that uh, I met you early on, and uh, and it was like I've known you all your life. It's easy to. T to talk with someone like you. I mean, you make it easy for me to talk with you. And uh, and the people you talk with everywhere. I, because I, I sense a genuine interest in, in, that you have in what we have to say. That makes a good interviewer and makes a good interview. And you've done this quite a few times in your life, being the yeah. th uh, three-term three -term sheriff of Shelby County and four, the mayor. And four-term mayor. Four-term, four-term mayor, okay. So three-term sheriff, that's what, 14 years? No, that's six years. That's, six all, years. that's all you can serve. Six years? Country. Okay. Three terms. And then mayor's 14? 16. 16. Yeah. So, wow, yeah. you had So I had 22 years and a lot of stuff in between, you know. Quite a career. And, and the stuff that I did in between, the scouting and business and, and civic organizations. If you look at my book, there are over 200 civic organizations in the back of the book that I had an active participation in during those many years. Mighty proud of that, whether it's the Lions Club or the JCs or Heart Association, the Cancer Crusades, those kinds of things, the East Seal Society, those are organizations that made a contribution or make a contribution to the betterment of the world. And I found that to be uh, a particular part of your, your values when it's all said and done. The creeds that you learn uh, uh, one in the options organization was to be so strong that nothing can change your way of thinking. Uh, that's what uh, maintain your own values and not be persuaded to change because somebody else thinks you ought to think differently. Right. And uh, be strong in your values, strong in your commitment to yourself. And. Uh, yeah, don't look don't. for the good things in life, you know. Look for the guy like that. Look for the good things in life. You know, it's really been a, a pleasure to visit with you again. And that, well, well, may I say this? You always have a place in my house to come to see me. I appreciate and, that, Mr. Morris. Uh, and look, look forward to having you back. All right. Well, hey, thanks for that drive. My pleasure. Thanks for watching this episode with Glow Trotting with Trey. Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. That is my friend. That's Elvis Presley's friend. Memphis Mafia member, former sheriff, former mayor of Shelby County, Mr. Bill Morris. Thanks, Bill. Like I always tell you, you're a cool man. Pick up Bill's book at www.billmorrisbook.com. 
purchase that book for the holiday season and let him know that Trey sent you. Guys, don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey if you haven't already. New episodes on Elvis every Tuesday. Special ones here and there. Until next time, I will see you down the road. Thanks for watching. <laughs>